Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and today's episode we're going to be taking a little look at a Crowcast mower that I got coming as part of a job lot. This is quite a large one. It's got a 6.25E um, e Briggs & Stratton engine on the top. It cost me next to nothing. It's a big old mower. I'm hoping um, this is the one I'm hoping to get the money out of. Uh, even if you have one sell, I'm hoping this one is going to be the money maker. If it's your first time in watching Mixed Mowers, hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all and that will tell you that one, I've either released another video or two, I'm on my Saturday night weekly live stream where you're welcome to come up and join us and have a, a fun fun chat and all the rest of it, all about small engines and anything else that crops up. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Let's check out this Quotecast mower, see if we can't get it to run and uh, see if it's going to be a good one. Right, and here it is. It's quite a big old lump. I think it's about a 21 inch cut, give or take, somewhere along that line. I've, all I've done to it literally is put two bolts in, which I'm gonna cut off with my grinder in a bit, um, just to secure the, um, the handles, because the handles are all, all in bits, pretty much. Um, and I won't do a great deal. So I've got that to do. Um, but apart from that, um, this um, machine I haven't even looked at it, haven't checked it all or anything. It's been in the old mower store for about three days now. And um, I'm hoping to uh, get this one to, uh, to turn over and to at least fire. Not sure the reason why it's been thrown out. Uh, this was down This was down the tip. Um, so someone else has um, has given this one up. Uh, obviously there's a reason. It could, it could be an absolute multitude of things. So first things first, I'll check underneath, check the old blade. Blade looks to be in good condition and all seems to be where it needs to be. So happy with that. So let's make a bit of room because it is quite a big old mower this one. And um, I'm going to get a spark plug um, spanner. We'll take the spark plug out and we'll try and pull it over see if it won't at least fire. It's got one of the, it's got a, one of the newer style uh, overhead valve plugs in it. And I have some new ones in stock now because someone bought me some, which is cool. So let's take that out, see what that looks like. So it's got quite a big lump on this one, 150cc, um, 625e uh, Briggs & Strat. Now I'm not a fan of these engines, I must admit. I'm not a fan of the new Briggs & Strat, Briggs and Strat and engines. But it's what it is, it's what it is. Um, it's got throttle control on it, it's got drive on it. Seems to be a problem with the height adjustment. I'll it out of the van. The old height just, just knocked on the floor. The plug has been it's been running very rich, always been tipped up. And that's got a champion in there. So I'm gonna put a brand new Briggs and Strat one in. Uh, which would be these ones. Let's give it a quick pull over first to see what actually happens when we pull it over. Oh, a little thing on here, let's just say, uh, missed to somebody. Uh, 16th of the 10th, 2019, it was last in. So it pulls over, which is good. Let's check the oil, see what that's doing. Again, this has been left outside where I pick them up from. All is absolutely bang on and greyish in colour. It's not looking too bad at all. It will have an oil change regardless. So let's get a little bit of the old, the old start and stuff. Let's put that down in there. And let's have a little look to see if it will at least just fire up. You don't get a lot of room with these new spark plugs, I must admit. Let's wind that on in. And we'll do that up. HT lead on. Right, let's see what we get off of this one. Hopefully a fire up and not cause no problems. Now, it fires up. 
fired up. One thing I did notice, it was quite shaky. It was quite shaky. I don't know whether it's got a bent crank on it, or something's gone, gone adrift, or the blades just sort of severely out of balance. But that did, that did shake quite a bit, substantially. Do you know what I think that I think that crank is bent? Yeah. Yes. Oh, severely. Yeah, crank is bent on this engine. So here we go, and uh, I can just tell just by watching the boss that that's got too much movement in it. Massive massive problem with that engine um, there's no way I can straighten that absolutely no way that that crankshaft is absolutely ruined yeah way off so this is terminal for me um, lots of good spares unfortunately lots of good spares but um, this is the one I was banking on to return my money so what I shall be doing with this one is um, taking the engine off and um, I'm going to be on the lookout for another 650 um, or 550 uh, Briggs and Stratton engine for cheap. Pick it up, put it straight on and away it goes. So all I'm going to do with this engine initially is just going to take the, take the engine off and then it'll be tucked away, hidden away and you'll see it come back with a um, another engine on top and then we do a full service on it and uh, all that sort of good stuff and get it running again. Right, we're gonna make a start with this only because whilst I've been uh, doing other bits and pieces I have ordered and now got receipt of uh, a brand new crankshaft for this somewhere in here. There it is. Brand new crankshaft for this, for this um, engine. Took a little while to get to find the numbers for it. Um, and the crankshaft is only uh, 38 quid. So 38 pound for a brand new crank, which is severely bent, and I mean severely bent. So quite happy with that. Um, I haven't got the seals for it, so I'm gonna try and keep the seals if I can. But it means this engine's now gotta come off, uh, all the covers off, engine off, get rid of the deck, engine upside down, all that sort of good stuff, and then hopefully trying to start to extract the crank out of it, uh, new crank in, and um, hopefully we can save this little engine for around about 30 to 40 quid, which is which is well within my my um, profit range because um, it only cost me about a fiver. It's got a few little fixes to be done. Um, the uh, spring on this height adjustment is broken, so I need to somehow do a little fix on that so to make sure that it sits in here, we, we should keep the height adjustment up off the ground. But at the moment, it's just a bit sloppy. If I can do that fixture as well, that'll help. Uh, the wheels are a little bit wobbly, but they do on these. But we'll see how we get on. So what I'm gonna do is I'll start to undo the um, pull cord assembly, all that sort of good stuff. That can all be removed. And then we can then start to uh, removal of covers. Uh, I was checking the valves just to make sure that the uh, the valves were open and closing beforehand, uh, which are fine. And we're going to take the engine off. So that's where I'm going to do next. If I'm on the D wall. I'm definitely going to be needing a magnet tray. this is not going to be a short video because the amount of parts and amount of work that needs to be done so I'll try and keep it as short as I can now when you're doing one of these um, one of these jobs you want to make sure you've got a big tub down beside you because um, it's going to have lots of spare parts knocking about. So make sure you've got a nice big tub, which I have. 
and it just keeps all the spare bits together. I've got to remove the flywheel um, nut, um, all the casing surrounds and what have, that's what come out. Um, but if I take the flywheel off first, then that way I can uh, then extract the uh, crankshaft out of the other end of the other end of the engine when it comes to it. See if that fits. I think it does. Yeah, that fits. Good. Let me pick up that uh, little socket before I lose any more bits. Okay. So off that comes. Oh, that's well on there. Off that comes. And now I want to remove the flywheel. And I'm going to use my air hammer for that just to take this flywheel up. Okay, with my pry bar in place, I'll put the nut back on. Just going to put that on the center line. You turn it down a smidge, that's right up full belt. There you go. Now the problem with this flywheel is that it didn't actually have um, a hollow, so I've had to use a punch just to mark the top of the shaft. Um, and now that's why I put the nut back on because I don't want to damage the threads, which I may have possibly done a little tiny bit, but don't forget this crank is coming out. <clears throat> I just nicked them. So. Most shafts actually have a hole at the top which you can put the air, air hammer in, but as you can see, that's remove that with a relative ease, which is good. Now remove the shaft, broken keyway, flywheel looks good, no fractures, because sometimes they fracture. Now I've got some bolts to undo here to remove this casing. And with those uh, three bolts now removed, you can now take the casing off, a bit of gasket there to go back on when we are uh, when we do the machine, put it back on. So that all goes into there. Um, we've got, that's about as far as we need to go uh, for now. I'll put a bit of tape over this hole just here, just to protect the air breather. Um, because now we can now take the engine off, disconnect all the cables, and that's as far as we need to go with regards to um, having the flywheel off. Because now we can actually bash this, um, this fly this crankshaft out with the way that it is. So I want to disconnect the um disconnect all the cables now. A few tools everywhere. I need a workshop trolley. I might treat myself to one. I think you can get one old Amazonian. A little free free shelf trolley is what I want. So take the old what's that throttle? Take the throttle off. Easy enough done. And then I'll we'll remove the dead man. Which is just two little tiny ears to fold them in. Pull it out. Take that off. That's that off. Put my air hammer back, that's out of the way. Right, so now that's all done. Um, we can now tip this lawnmower up on its side, remove the blade, and then under the uh, bolts to remove the, um, the engine from the machine. Right, we're now trying to remove this blade. No spark plug boot is not on the engine, so the engine can't start with it, despite the fact there's no fuel tank on it or anything like that. Let's uh, try and do this. Ooh. 
that's undone, that was loose actually. I want to try and check the condition of this blade. Do you know what, this blade is actually all right. I've got a feeling maybe someone put another blade on this after it got, it got whacked. But as you can see, let me show you, let me try and zoom in for you, two seconds, two seconds. So one of the advantages to having this camera is I can actually zoom in. Uh, I can't zoom in whilst recording, that's the only problem. And I've got a light on it now, so you can see it much, much better. So you zoom right in. Now, if you look just up here, you should be able to see the, the bend in this crank. Can you see that? So that's the top of a bend there, I'd say. And that's the bottom. See how that's, how it's bent? Well bent, that is absolutely shocking. So definitely a bent crank. Okay, so now we can try and remove this, this boss. There it goes. I've got a keyway in there somewhere. I might have to put it back on just so I can turn it around so I can see the keyway. It's gonna be there. That keyway's got to come out. So I need to take all the bits off that I can. Here's a keyway. Lovely. That all comes out, all goes into, all goes into a tub. And we've got all sort of another little socket there, come on. A little tiny spacer. That's quite a cool idea. Spacer for the boss. There's another little hack, maybe, if your boss is too deep. I didn't know I did that. That's cool. I quite like that. I'll tip that right way so I know what, what, what that does. Um, we can probably leave the belt pulley on, but take the belt off. I've got a little tiny bolt here to remove. That should be an 8mm. I think it may prove me to be wrong, be a 10. It's a 10. Always is. Whenever I say what size it is, it's always the other. So I'm just going to remove uh, this 10 mil to remove the um, the cover. Just caught with the tray. There it is. I've got a couple of bits down here to remove. There's little tiny screws, which are going to need to have a bit of work done to them to get them off, which I don't know whether I can get around it by putting my little tiny groove in there to um, get them to open up, because these are, these are well corroded as usual. No, they're corroded, so I can't get at those. So I might have to put a little tiny line into those to um, make them into flat heads. But what I might be able to do is just bend this down enough just so I can turn, turn this um, crankshaft round to remove the belt from said pulley. It's not gonna be easy because I don't want to pinch my fingers in at the same time. It only goes so far and it stops, that's a problem. Let's come back a bit to where I can turn it. It's gonna be about there. And then I should be able to turn it around ah, to get that belt off. There it comes, it's coming. There it goes. A bit more, Mick. Oh! Just a touch more, it's all at once. Let's put a pair of grips on it. So don't forget this crank's coming out, so. That's better. Is that gone? Nearly. There it goes. Right, now the belt's come off. There it goes. Right, so now the belt's off, which is good. We can now concentrate and remove the engine bolts from that's it there. Right. So now we're at the bottom of the engine, and there should be seven on most engines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's it. So we've seven to remove from here, and they're gonna be about a ten or three eighths. I'm gonna go with three eighths, see how that fits. It should be a better fit than a 10 all day long. 10 would be too sloppy, yeah. So these are going to be a 3 8 and they should all be the same size. So we're now going to crack them all off together, nice and gently. them done. 
Now they should all be the same size as I say. Let's undo these. Got one shorter one there. Wouldn't you know it? So that shorter one was in there. Was it? No, it wasn't. Where did that short one go? They're in there. So the short one, is me and my big head, the short one goes in the here, okay? So just remember that for future reference. So the short one goes in the middle, and let's just check the length of all these ones. So just line them up as you take them out. They used to be all the same size, especially on the, on the classics. So if you take them out roughly where they are, you can then sort of guesstimate what goes where. That's what I do. So all of these are all exactly the same size. So you just got one short bolt, which is one in the center at the back. So all of those go into your parts tray. Okay, now I've got to remove this pulley. Just to encourage that to come off. And just want to test to see how coarse that is. In some cases you have to sand these down so that the um, the ore seal comes up with it, okay? Because if, it, if you break your ore seal, you've got to replace it. I'm hoping to get around that by not by not uh, replacing the ore seal, but uh, I might have to just have to order some up anyway. So that's that part done. We can now beat this pan up and you do that with a rubber mallet. Okay, so with a rubber mallet, I've got a metal side and a plastic side. You just literally want to break the seal. Don't go giving this too much physic because I don't like it. And you break the bottom pan when you look for a new pan. Now I do have a spare pan for this, so I am sort of lucky in that respect. So it's starting to separate now. Just want to get a bit of a tease on all angles where you can. But don't be tempted to really give it some physics because if you break it, as I say, you have to replace it. Uh, the pan now removed. No damage appears to be done to anything else inside. Just looking straight off the bat anyway. I'm hoping there's no damage to a piston rod or anything like that. I'm not seeing no fractures. So that's that now done. We can now remove the cam as well. That can come out, okay. And then we've got your push, push rods. They can stay in for now. We don't need them out, okay. Um, but now we want to be looking at trying to remove the um, the piston rod arm, which is two bolts, and um, undo those. That will then remove the piston arm, or just track it out of the way, and then we can bash this um, crankcase, a uh, crank crankshaft, out of the actual machine itself. And for your viewing pleasure, there's a crankshaft. As you can see, it goes round. It's bent round that way. You can actually see how bent that is. Absolutely mullered. So that's where it's actually bent, just there, all the way around. See that? Bent like a banana. Okay, this little cog can come off. Put on the old Nixfield oil slinger. Um, now I've got to undo these two little tiny bolts, one here and one around the back. And I'm going to want a fairly small bar, because it's going to be quite fiddly to get in there. Now these have to be torqued up when um, when you do them up. I need to, to look up the torque specs on it. It should be about an eight mil. But you need a real small bar to get in. I'm trying to just rotate that back enough just so I can get it to go up into about that sort of level there. And that should give me enough then to get this little socket on. Yeah, I'm going to change it down and touch to a different side. Let's try 5 16th. Yeah, 5 16th is better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to undo these two bolts here. This one here, this one here. That part of the rod comes off and then you can then push the piston back in um, and that will then um, slacken off this shaft and you just better lift the uh, push the shaft out through this end. Now these are all set to specifications when we're done up. I've got to need to look that up. I don't know over the top of my head. You guys probably do. I don't. There's the other one. Now we can push the piston rod out the way. 
and give the old piston a bit of a backwards rotation. And that will allow you then to push the piston. So let's spark plug in it. No, push the piston um, back out the way. So we can then um, push the piston in and then when we come all the way around, it then lifts the shaft out the top like so and to come straight out in your hand. Boom. So there's the old bent crank. That can go for a burton. I want to clean the bottom of the pan up. Um, and then we can start to reinstall uh, the new crankshaft. Okay. So a bit of a bit of a clean up, a bit of a tidy. This is the new shaft going in. Remove the old um, piston rod out the way. Slowly slide the new one in place. Might just have to pick the back of the engine up slightly, just so we can locate it in the right place, which is going to be about there. Then we'll try and draw the piston back out without damaging the. Um, actual shaft itself or the rod it's a bit of jiggery pokery and tools fly everywhere when this happens but generally you can just put the piston to the shaft and then pop it back and it will to a certain degree follow you that's how I do it anyway to about there do go a touch more. Now this has got oil on it, so it's super slippery. There it comes. It's coming. Just keep your finger in there. Don't pinch your finger. Though. Just keep going back, and it, and it will it will pick it. Let's go to about there. Okay. Now I want to get me my little tiny um, part of the piston. And one end is beveled and the other end isn't. So it wants to be this end goes nearest the cylinder because it's got a bevel on this end here. See how that sits in there? See how that's different? Yeah? So that will then go into here. Like so. You might have to track one of the bolts out. Once you get one of the bolts in and lined up, you can then grab that piston rod. So slide that in. Like so. That'll start to draw. Okay, do that one up slightly, just so it grabs it. Right, rod's back in, just now talking up to spec. That's one done, and now just bringing the other one up as well. Nearly there. That's it there. So those don't have to be amazingly tight. If you do them up too tight, then that, pit, that, that crankshaft will not rotate. If it doesn't rotate, then you won't get no oil coming up through these gaps here to keep the shaft well lubricated. It needs to be up to specification. And one good way of just feeling it, you get a feel for these things, is you can then rotate the, the shaft with relative ease, okay? Relative ease. And when you do a full revolution without catching any cloth in there, um, you'll then be able to tell that you have actually um, got it where it needs to be. But double check that you can, you can do revolution on it because obviously sometimes um, when you're putting new stuff in, they may not have sent you the right shaft. Okay, you are sort of relying on people a little tiny bit to send you the right stuff pending with numbers. You need to make sure that you've got it, around again, got it on around the right way and you can do a full revolution on the crankshaft and it doesn't hit the casing. Okay, that sits in that little tiny groove just there. Okay, and it needs to be there because that's how you're going to set your top dead center and then use your donor washer on top like so all right the next bit is kind of critical <laughs> well it is on this um little tiny wheel uh, this is a camshaft okay you've got this little tiny marking just here can you see that little tiny marking no it's only got one of those all over okay just one marking just there all on its own that marking compared to this one in fact i'll probably show you it might be easier on this one that's all the office of it. This is the old one. Um, you'll find the marking on this one. There it is. So there's the same marking on this black cog, which is just there. You see, it's a bit different to all the others. And that's how you mark up your timing. And it needs to sit in like that. Okay. So this black one goes on the crankshaft, which is already on it, the new one. And this camshaft goes down to here. 
and it sits in this little tiny hole just here. And when you put them in, they must line up like so. If it's like so, you'll have problems. If it's like so, you'll have problems. If it's like so, you'll really have problems. But if it's like that, then you won't go far wrong. Okay, so make sure that's all lined up. So I'm just gonna put that in now, and hopefully it'll go in with no issues. Just make sure my push rods are all on the valves where they should be, which they are. And we're now gonna just try and slide that in. Here's my marking on the on the black one. And I'm now I'm just gonna try and manipulate, that's too far back, that's uh, there. So that's where that needs to be. That sits on there, sits against that, and then that goes on. So that's no biggie. That just sits there and that just, that just slings all, all over the shop, okay? Uh, not, nice and simple, nice and easy. That's all that does. So that sits against there, uh, no problem. So next thing I wanna do is now, which I should have done beforehand, is take all this gasket off. I've got some gasket glue to put on. I need to clean the pan up as well. And whilst we're in here, I'm gonna check for fractures uh, within here. It doesn't look like there is any at all. Sometimes when it hits something, you get a fracture. But there's a little bit, of, a little tiny bit of grain here, which is which is saying that there's, there's been a bit of an issue, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. And we won't know until we put it back together anyway. So that's pretty much it done. I'm just going to um, clean this um, top up with a Stanley knife and the same on the pan, and then we can then install the pan and screw that down. Right, I've now got the pan down. It was a bit tricky. Um, all I will say is, is when you're putting the pan down on these, uh, you just need to pay attention to where the shaft is because sometimes the shaft is too far up um, when you um, insert it and you may have to give a shaft a bash down to bring everything into a line. But make sure your timing is set, which is I showed you. Uh, make sure your slinger is on or your, or your governor slinger and uh, what, all that stuff, make sure you, all your cans are in place. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a fiddle, but it's perfectly doable. Um, and once your pan is all the way down, you can then start to tighten down all your, um, all your bolts. Okay, so that's where we're gonna leave this engine now. Um, hopefully we've got enough gasket seal all the way around. Hopefully it'll bite down. I let the gasket um, sealant um, put on there first. It rested for about 10 minutes. Um, just get sort of get to sort of temperature and then uh, squeeze it on down through and that will now be left for a good 24 hours I'm not even going to entertain coming back to it until I know that that's set if you come back too early to it then um, there's a very high uh, risk that uh, it, it won't hold so no all in the machine the machine will stay like this now for 24 hours and then we come back Right, so that's that little Crowcast um, lawnmower, the Briggs & Strat 6.25e now setting. Um, it's had the, um, the crankshaft uh, removed, new one put in, and uh, all been put back correct. So hopefully the oil seals will hold. If not, I should be going back. Uh, but as you can see, I don't know if you can get a proper proper look at that. But that crankshaft is absolutely walked. Absolutely mud. It's bent just there. That's where it is. Um, so no point in straightening that, and that's actually a 38 pound fix, um, which is cool. Um, so that'll do for part one of this lawnmower fix. I'm gonna go back to part two at another day. Um, I'll be doing it tomorrow, but you'll be seeing it in a couple of weeks after that. So it'll be um, put the engine back onto the mower deck, all that sort of good stuff, filling up with oil, and uh, hopefully see if the oil does hold. Uh, but I'll leave a good 24 hours to set, as I say. So that's cool. If you enjoyed this video of Mixed Mowers, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told that one, I've either released a video or two of them on my Saturday night weekly live stream. Um, if you've got any comments, stick them down below and give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. 
and I uh, hope to see you all again on the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.